Hello, today we're going to be talking about groups in Posthog. Groups are a powerful feature which enable you to aggregate events and create insights at an entity level as opposed to a user level. To understand this better, let's look at an example. Let's say you're building a B2B SaaS app for project management like Asana or Jira. Now, with regular events in Posthog, you can capture events and view insights at a user level. So for example, you could see how many active users you have in your app or how many users engage with a specific feature. Now, since this is a B2B SaaS app, you're also interested, you also may be interested in zooming out and viewing uh, insights at a company level as opposed to just a user level. So for example, you may want to see how many active companies you have or how many, how many companies have tried a specific feature? This is where group analytics comes in. Creating groups for companies in Posthog is the most common use case. Since typically B2B SaaS apps find it very useful to aggregate events at a company level. That said, groups in Posthog don't necessarily need to represent a group of users. They can represent any entity type. So, for example, if we think about something like a Jira or Asana app, you could create groups for projects, and this would enable you to capture events at a project level and create insights at a project level. You might be asking yourself, well, how is this useful? Well, let's say you wanted to analyze the funnel and drop-offs for how users are interacting with your, with your project. Let's say the funnel consists of three steps. The first step is the project is created. The second step is a task is created for that project. And the third step is somebody completed that task. Without group analytics, it's going to be difficult to create this funnel since, well, if you think about it, in a company, it could be any user who's doing any one of these three steps and doesn't necessarily have to be the same user. Group analytics makes it easy because we're not looking at events at a user level, we're looking at them at a project level, so it's going to be much easier to create this insight. If this all sounds confusing to you, don't worry. I'm going to walk you through an example now where I show you how to create and use groups in Posthog. For this video, I've created a simple Next.js and React app. Um, while this tutorial focuses on React and Next.js, Really, the principles here apply to any one of our SDKs and frameworks. Um, so the principles apply to backend, frontend, web, mobile, any one of the web frameworks. Uh, the concepts remain the same. All right, now let me walk you through the sample app. So what I've done here is I've created a simple Jira clone. Um, there are two options when you hit the landing page. You can either sign up and create a new company or you can sign into an existing company. Let's say we sign up with a new company. Uh, you can fill out your name. So my name is Lior, the company name is Posthog, and my email is Lior at posthog.com. That's my real email. Uh, if you click finish signing up, you get taken to a dashboard screen. You can see my email on the top left here. Uh, and here we will show a list of projects. To create a project, we click the new project button, we give it a name, let's say my first project. We click create, and now we can see the project. You can then click into this project, which takes you to the project page, and you can create tasks for this project. So this will call my first task. And then you can mark tasks as complete or incomplete. Okay, let's go ahead now and show you how to create a group. We're gonna create a group first for companies so we can view analytics at a company level, like the number of active companies. To do this, we go to our signup component code uh, and let's say on the, and we'll add the code here on the submit button. So let's say once the user signs in. What we're going to add here is posthog.group and this function takes in three different parameters. First is the group type. So in this case, it's going to be company. The second is uh, the group key. So the unique identifier for the group. So for example, you can use either um, 
uh, the group, uh, the, the company domain or the company ID on your database, anything here that you can uniquely identify the group. So uh, in this case, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the company domain. So let's just get the company domain. Uh, so uh, company domain is equal to uh, the form data email. All right. So we're using the company domain here for the thing. And the last property, uh, the last uh, parameter here is any properties you want to set on the group. So for example, in our case, it might be helpful just if we set the name of the, the name of the company as a property. And you can set anything here as a property, really like for example, um, what kind of bidding plan this company is on. Um, yeah. Okay, next la let's add similar code to the sign-in page. Uh, I'm just going to copy this quickly, go to the sign in page. Um, and similarly, when the user signs in, I'm just going to paste my code here and did the file. And on the sign in page, we don't have access to the name, so we're not going to set the property. We're just going to call post hoc group. Now to create a new company in post hoc, all we need to make sure is that this code is called. So let's go back to our sample app and sign up a few times. So we go to the home page, we click sign up with new company. Uh, let's say the name is Max, the company can be OpenAI. And we say the email is max at openai.com. Let's click finish signing up. Uh, we could create a new project, OpenAI project. Uh, we won't create any tasks. Okay, so this should have created one one group now for the, a company called OpenAI. Now let's log out. Let's uh, let's sign into an existing company. So we previously created a company for PostHog. So let's sign in with the PostHog one. Sign in, um, and now let's log out and just do this once more. So let's say now somebody else from posthog wants to sign in so somebody named let's say bob at posthog.com and you can imagine for b2b SaaS apps you know a company is only created once um but uh, multiple employees can sign into the same company once it's been created and so we can sign in and we should see yeah we can see the actually we can actually see here the first project that was created by leor the other user here um and you know, this person can go in and create a new task here. So second task by Bob. So what we've done here now is that we have two unique companies here, but three unique users. So now let's go have a look to see what this looks like in post hog. First, you can view your groups here in the people in groups tab. So if we click here and we click on companies, that's the group type we created. We can see our two groups, our two companies here, OpenAI and PostHog. If we click into one of these, we can see we can see events uh, and any other um, things done by people in this group. The more interesting thing here is to create insights. So let's click here to create a new insight. And what I'm going to do now is create an insight to to show the number of active companies. So to do this, first you choose an event. Uh, for this case, I'm just going to stick to the page view event. Then what you do is you click here on this drop down, and you should see here uh, the aggregation type. You can so I'm going to select the aggregation aggregation type here, unique companies. And when I selected, we should see yes, we have here two unique companies. Awesome. Let's try to do something a bit more interesting now. What I want to do next is create a funnel at a project level, uh, which I described earlier in, in this video. So first, what I'm going to do is go back to my code. Now, what I'm going to show you here is a slightly different way of uh, creating groups and setting group properties. Um, the first met method I showed you was, was calling posthog.group. And this function is unique to, to client side apps. And what this does is once you call this code, any future events that you captured will be associated to this group. 
Um, so in this case, uh, any events captured by this user in this app is also going to be associated to this company. Now, this makes sense for something that's higher level like company, which you know encompasses users. But for something lower level like project, you might not necessarily want all future events to be associated with, with uh, that project. So I'm going to show you a different way now, which is going to uh, enable you to only, only capture events um, that you want for the group. So to do this, let's go to our dashboard page where we create project. And in this function here where we create a project, I already have this existing post hoc capture call. And this is just going to, this is just a, a normal capture call, which is, which tells us that a project has been created. To create, to create a group type for project here, what you do is in the properties, you set a property called groups and groups is, is an object and the the first key is the, the type of the groups. In this case, we're going to call it a project. Uh, we call it a project. And then the key, the, the value for this key should be the ID or the unique, unique ID that you have. So in this case, we're going to use the project ID. Now what's going to happen when I call this code is that it's going to capture this project created event. It's going to create this new group type called project if it doesn't already exist. And it's going to associate this event to this new group. And in this way, we've now associated this, this project, this event to the group. The next thing I want to do is to set the properties for this group. The, this you need to do in a separate post hoc call. So let's do that. We need to capture an event called group identify. Um, and this, this is the event that we use to set group properties. So the first, um, key you need to have here is group type. So in this case, we're going to call it project. The second is the group key. So this is the unique identifier for the group. So this is the project ID. Uh, and then the last key is group set. And this is the properties that you want to set. So in this case, you want to set the property of the group, which is the name, and we just give it the new project name. Great. Let's go now and capture some more group events for our project. For example, when tasks are created or completed. So we go to our project page. Um, and here we can see we have this post on capture, this task created call. And again, what we're going to do here is add a property called groups, oh, property called groups. And inside, inside, um, the value, the value for this object is, is, um, project and project ID. And this, this again is now going to associate this event that we capture here with this project. Finally, let's do it again for when a, a task is completed. So I have this function here called toggle, uh, toggle task status. And here, what I'm going to do again is add the groups tag, uh, the groups uh, value, the same with the project and the project ID. All right, let's go back to our sample app now and generate some events. If we go back, uh, and we create a new project here. So let's just give it a name, my second project. This will create a new group for this project. And similarly, let's, let's create another one. My third project. And we can go into this project. Let's create a task. So uh, a task. Let's create here another task. Let's, you know, mark this task as complete. Let's go back. We go to the third project. Let's create a task for that. Uh, this time we won't mark it as complete. And just for good luck, we'll do a fourth project. And in this case, yeah, we'll create a new task again. And let's mask this task as complete. 
Now let's go to post hog and create our funnel. So let's create a new insight. We click on funnels. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this aggregation type. So instead of aggregating by users, we want to aggregate by our project. So we change it to unique projects. And now let's add the funnel step. So the first step would be that a project was created. The second step is that a task was created. And the last step would be a task completed. And now, as you can see, this has given me a nice overview of the various drop-offs rate from how many projects are created to how many of them actually have a task completed in the end. Again, because multiple users can create or complete tasks and create projects, uh, this, is, this is much, much easier to do with group analytics than it is with regular analytics. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any more questions, please comment on the docs.